I think he did. The energy that was put into him by Thomas Bancroft, on the other hand, uh, was somewhat dissipated by the time he finished at Cheshire. Not surprising, really. He was only 34 years old by the time he finished. And he went back to London to live for the time being and did other things. And he was very much concerned with his researches. He was interested in working at the British Museum continually, but not necessarily about the history of Cheshire. And he did get other opportunities. He was asked if he would write the history of Lancashire, for instance, and the history of uh, Salford. And the, during those immediate years after he'd finished, and he, in every one he said, I think I've, I, I've done enough for the time being. So I have a feeling that it was the energy that, that he'd put into history of Cheshire which was used up. Nevertheless, he did intend to do more, and um, it's plain that he was keeping notes. There was a volume of the history which he kept with blank pages in it, in which he could make notes, and so that they could be used in the future if he were to revise his history. It never did happen. And interestingly, that particular volume never came into the hands of Thomas Helsby, who was the editor of the second edition. We're talking about the 1880s now, a lot later. But um, I think that the uh, other thing that he was doing, obviously there's an awful lot of the things he was doing which were nothing to do with uh, history at all. Uh, if I might just mention those things, after the 1820, 23, roughly speaking, uh, he came into a very different situation. Uh, his uncle, Thomas Johnson, died and left him a tremendous amount of property and businesses in, Ch in Lancashire, in the Tilsley area of Lancashire. That was a responsibility he had to deal with straight away. He then had a family growing up, and also that he had ten children, you see, in fact, seven sons and three daughters, who we'll be talking about. And he also had the responsibility of uh, where he would go after he left Cheshire, because he, when he'd finished in Cheshire in 1817, he moved back to London and never lived in Cheshire again. He let this house off until 1823, when he sold it. But um, he lived from then on down south. Not quite true because he came to Tilsley, uh, his uncle's house, after his uncle died. But the climate was too damp, I think, for his wife. And so they didn't stay there very long. They moved down to Gloucestershire and he stayed in that marvellous place, which is called Sedbury Park, which he made into the most beautiful mansion. And there he lived and died at, uh, in 1873. But um, while he was down there, other influences came to bear on him, quite apart from the fact that he had his, uh, his industrial interest, which developed up in Lancashire, coal mining and so on. Uh, he had agricultural interests in his Sedbury Park estate, which was quite considerable. He was a magistrate which was no easy task in those days, talking 1830s, 1840s. And then he had uh, joined various societies, because round about the 1840s, the whole idea of learned societies in society grew up. That's to say, the Chester Archaeological Society was formed round about then. He was a member of that. And he was constantly being asked to give talks or to make papers and so on, and to write things. And he was very interested himself in doing that. He had a library at his Sedbury Park home where he would stick himself day and night if he could and worked very hard in uh, his own researches on the Sedbury and Chepstow area of Gloucestershire, down, down that part of the world. And he wrote a certain number of books, which are really minor works in comparison to Cheshire, but nevertheless have a standing in the county of Gloucestershire. They're used, for instance, in the Victoria history of, of Gloucestershire. 
and um, have a considerable interest of their own. So that was another influence upon him which took him away from the possibility of, of writing a big history. Having said that, I, I have the feeling that he intended to write a history of that particular area. But once again, I think it was this lack of energy later on, and of course he was getting older, uh, that prevented him doing that. So that the answer to your question uh, is that Cheshire stands on its own, I think, with the inspiration.